What's up YouTube, it's your old school expert and today I'm gonna to show you guys my zombie goat deck profile. Um, it's fairly standard zombie uh, with just a little bit of some different stuff that maybe some zombie decks don't use. Um, and we'll go through some explanations for different stuff. But first, I just wanna say that I know I haven't made a video in a long time. I'm more into dueling now and less into collecting than I was. I've sold off the majority of my PSA cards um, just because, I mean, I have all those cards raw uh, in near mint condition and that brings me just as much joy and nostalgia as a PSA 10 does um, so I just I don't know I just kind of lost my love for um, the PSA stuff plus I mean the money was excellent so um, didn't really feel like hanging on to that stuff anymore um, so let's get into this goat deck it's a pretty fun deck um, it's pretty consistent fairly successful does well against a variety of different decks I'd say the worst deck matchup for me so far that I've tested against is like traditional goat control um because thousand eyes restrict gives me some issues with this deck uh because i'm not running book of moon um but yeah let's get into the deck so obviously starting off three pyramid turtles um this is a very let's zoom in a little bit so you can see a little bit better this is an incredible card um it's probably the best recruiter in the entire game um and these are just you want them out as quickly as you can. You want to attack uh, into your opponent's monster with them. Um, so three pyramid turtle, try to get these out like, you know, like I said, as quick as you can. You don't want to set it and then hope it, hope they attack into it because it could get noblemen. Um, I guess if they have a bunch of back row, you wouldn't want to just throw one out and try to attack with it. But generally that's kind of what you do just to get your vampire lord out as quick as possible or um, a really anything else. Uh, so next we got two Spirit Reaper. Um, I run two because a lot of people are not running Air Knight right now, and Air Knight is really one of the only things that gives this any kind of issues. So um, otherwise, this card is incredible. It's such a great stall, um, but it's also excellent for going after hand, and it also triggers a lot of back row, um, especially stuff like Book of Moon, which really doesn't do anything to it. It just flips it back down. Um, so that this is really a good card for being aggressive as well as stalling and trying to draw some better stuff. So really like Spirit Reaper. Um, next we got Ryokoki. So I actually run two Ryokoki. Um, I think this card is underrated for goats. A lot of goat decks only run one. I like two um, because you can always discard it if you don't want it and you got it in hand. There's plenty of stuff that'll allow you to discard. Um, but this is just such a beat stick. Um, it gets over, uh, it, it takes care of both Chaos Monsters um, because of its effect, it can run into BLS. It gets over Chaos Sorcerer. Um, and then uh, it matches up with Monarchs to take them out. Um, you can Book of Life this, and it's just a really good card. So you really hope you don't draw it, um, especially drawing two. It's pretty brutal, that happened to me in one game. Um, but yeah, overall, Rio Kalki is such a good card. Um, so I, I run two. It could be one, but I prefer two. Um, and then, of course, one Vampire Lord. Uh, this is a pretty much a staple in Goat decks because this card is really tough to get rid of. Once he's out, um, I mean, there's a few things. Chaos Monsters take care of him pretty nicely. Um, Monarchs but um, and Genzo. But pretty much outside of that, nothing really gets rid of Vampire Lord. Um, the, uh, oh, it's DD Warrior Lady and DD Assailant. Um, you don't see those a ton, but... Um, I think that's mostly because DD Warrior Lady is at one and then not many people run Assailant. Um, but yeah, this card is incredible. Get this out early, get it out often. Um, it changes the way your opponent has to play. Uh, and then they start using stuff like Sakretsu Armor just to protect their life points, um, which is great because then you're forcing them to use cards that basically do nothing against this except stall it. So really nice card. Um, so that's the zombies. Uh, so just a quick overview. Those are the zombies. So it's a bit, I guess you could call it a zombie engine. Um, but then there's some support for the zombies. So two giant rat, um, because giant rat is an excellent recruiter. It pulls out um, the pyramid turtle. So if you have a giant, it's basically, it's almost like having five pyramid turtles. So if you have a giant rat, you just bust it out, attack right into whatever it is, unless it's like an Aaronite or something you don't really want to run into. Um, and then bring out your pyramid turtle, run that into whatever, and then bring out your rear Koki or your vampire lord. Uh, so that's, it's a really good card. Um, next we got three Kaiku. Now this is something I've gone back and forth with. Um, the only reason there's three is because uh, chaos is so prevalent and you pretty much are 
are almost always going up against some variant of chaos. Um, so this really helps shut down chaos, chaos turbo, chaos control, all that stuff. It does really well against all of that. So I love Kaiku. Um, just having it out face up on the field, they can't um, bring out any chaos monsters, but then uh, being aggressive with it, hitting their life points as often as you can with Kaiku um, prevents them in the future from being able to special summon a chaos monster. So usually you kind of go for like either their lights or their darks, just kind of try to make sure they don't have one of the two in their graveyard. So three Kaiku, but I could definitely see running two. Um, one Exile Force, this card is incredible. This I think is one of the more underrated cards in GOAT format. You do see this played um, in some GOAT decks outside of like zombies, but uh, Giant Rat recruits it, which is good. Um, but this thing is just great, even if it takes up your normal summon, because um, if you're on the offensive, this card is, you want this in your hand. You want to stop those Magicians of Faith, um, or, you know, if you're playing against another uh, deck that runs Recruiters, this is great against Mystic Tomato or Giant Rat or anything like that. So, excellent card. One Tribe Infecting Virus, um, like I said, you sometimes want to discard Ryukoki or Vampire Lord if you have it in your hand, so you could Book of Life those later, so... Um, this is great. It gets rid of chaos monsters. So it's just kind of a really good out um, I don't run sinister serpent because there really wasn't room for it. It wouldn't be bad in this deck But I don't think um, it would be better really than any of the other cards that are in here. So Tribe infected virus is a good card um, it, It's just a good out to lots of different things uh, One Sangan because he's uh, the best floater in the game. Love having him out on the field um, It's great for attacking directly too because uh, sometimes you'll force them to use a mirror force or like a Sekretsu armor or something, so that's nice. Uh, one Breaker, this is a card I went back and forth on several times because it kind of it doesn't fit in this deck, but I'm not running Dust Tornadoes, and I'll show you why. So having some extra uh, spell and trap removal is pretty important. So I do run one Breaker, but I'm open to um, siding him out or maybe just maining him out to something else. Um, zombie related would be cool, but there's just not that many great options, and I really like Breaker. It's a very useful card. So into the spells, we got two Book of Life. Um, this card is incredible. Uh, it sucks when they have Kaiku on the field because you can't use it, but overall, this is a really good card. It bails you out a lot. It's really good on the top deck when you're desperate for a good zombie out of the graveyard. Um, plus, it's very useful against Chaos because you can remove um, their cards from their graveyard. So, really good card there. Two Noblemen to cross out, especially because you're constantly trying to be on the offensive in this deck. You're trying to move as quickly as you can. So, Noblemen is great. Uh, it gets rid of those spies, which can really wall this deck. Um, and, of course, the pesky flips like Magician of Faith, um, Magical Merchant, all that good stuff. Um, so, of course, you got the... Uh, Trinity here, as everyone calls it. Uh, Delinquent is an excellent card, although sometimes it's kind of dead in the hand. Uh, Graceful and Pot of Greed, pretty much no explanation there. Uh, one Lightning Vortex. So this card is sick. I love this card. Again, sometimes you need to discard in this deck, but I would say this is another one of those cards that's pretty underrated in GO format. Um, just because you don't, it's not like the best card ever, but you don't see it run that often, and maybe I think we should see this more. Um, it's extremely useful. Uh, often you have a card in your hand you don't really need, or that might even be better in the graveyard than it is in your hand. Um, I don't run, um, you know, like a Thunder Dragon or anything like that, but uh, this card is just so useful. It comes in handy um, often. It clears out scapegoats, and it's great against big monsters. So definitely run a Lightning Vortex in this deck. Um, then, of course, we got Premature Burial, Snatch Steel, so those are the equips. Heavy Storm, Mystical Space Typhoon, and then um, that is it for the spell cards. So next we've got um, Ring of Destruction is uh, pretty much the trap card that you see in every GOAT deck. Call the Haunted, of course, uh, with Zombies. You don't see this in every deck, but with Zombies, it's pretty damn useful. Always wanting stuff out of the graveyard. Uh, Torrential Tribute. Very, very useful. Great for clearing the board. Uh, one Sakretsu Armor. There's another card where I'm like, eh, I could side this out for something. So um, I do run one in the side deck. Uh, it's it's just very useful against those more aggressive decks that you want a little extra back row that's um, protective back row rather than like some of the other cards I'm about to show you. So uh, Mirror Force, of course, because it's Sakretsu on steroids. Um, all right, so I run three Trap Dust Shoot. 
Uh, I almost feel like this card should be run in any, um, pretty much any deck. Uh, it's a little overpowered in my opinion. It, I'm totally cool with uh, playing GOAT format without this, um, if that were the rules. I know some GOAT format tournaments or just like casual duels, people like to not play with this because this, this card is ridiculous. Um, but at the same time, sometimes it's dead in the hand. And again, that's why I run like Tribe Infecting Virus and um, Lightning Vortex because um, sometimes you don't want this. Uh, if they've only got one or two cards in hand, uh, you're gonna have to wait for this and this may never be useful. Um, but then at the same time, turn one, this card is insane. Uh, so it really slows your opponent down and gives you a huge advantage to know what's in their hand. Um, so three of those. Uh, that's why I don't run a Dust Tornado. And then there's another reason why I don't run Dust Tornado, I run three Solemns. So um, Solemn just basically, again, this, uh, this deck is pretty aggressive and when you're on the offensive, um, Solemn Judgment is excellent. It just, you know, it takes care of literally anything, any kind of back row. Um, special summons, all that great stuff. So this card is um, fantastic. I've never really used it and felt like I shouldn't have, like I overpaid for to negate or something like that. So um, especially late in the game, uh, especially late in the game when you have field presence, um, this card is gold, you really want this. So that is the zombie deck, the main deck. Now the side deck is pretty useful too. There are a few things in here um, also that I think I should uh, consider maybe using or not using. So um, we got one Smashing Ground. This is a just a good card. Um, I want to main it, but Lightning Vortex I feel is better because it's just even though it's more situational, it has a greater impact. So, um, but Smashing Ground, I really want to main it. I just can't figure out what to do. But uh, I probably won't end up maining it. Now this is a card I would love to main, but again I don't know what to take out. So creature swap, um, because I do have five recruiters, the three turtles and the two giant rats, um, I kind of want to run one creature swap, two maybe not, um, just because there are only five recruiters, but then again two gives you a better chance of drawing it and using it. Um, but then there are things like scapegoat, um, lot of uh, chaos decks and just other decks in general run scapegoat and then creature swap is, is pretty dead against a uh, face down scapegoat so um i don't know i don't think i'll end up maining it but this is a great card for siding um especially against goat control um because when they uh start all that nonsense with thousand eyes restrict and stuff uh, i like to get this out before they can do that um especially this too book of moon so i i side two book of moon um this is almost exclusively used against chaos control so that i can get thousand eyes restrict face down and do some actual attacking because that card just stalls this deck like to the moon no pun intended um so i definitely want to get this out sided in if i'm playing against a chaos control or any deck that runs metamorphosis basically um and get that uh, Thousand Eyes Restrict face down. So I don't main it because um, I don't really need it, but if I know I'm going up against a pretty much a control deck, then I'm gonna use that. Uh, we got one Sakretsu, like I said. So that is inside. Um, this probably could come out. I don't think I've ever sided it in. Um, it's just kind of there in case I felt like I got overwhelmed in a game. Maybe against like Beast Down or something, but that's not, you don't see that a lot. Um, two Dust Tornadoes because these are just incredible cards, perfect side deck card, um, especially if I feel like the Solemns aren't working or the uh, Trap Dust Shoots aren't helping, then um, Dust Tornado is excellent. Regenerating Mummy, this is a card that I would like to main, but again, maybe take Breaker out for this, but I don't really know. Um, I love how if you get um, Delinquent Duoed or something like that, uh, this card is just perfect for that. So. And it's a beat stick at 1800. It gets over most um, level four cards. So it, it's definitely not a bad card, but um, it's kind of dull at the same time because, you know, for summoning purposes, it's just, you know, just an 1800 attacker. That's really it. All right, so three Royal Decree. Um, this is probably the only card I don't have the version I want, which is the um, TP4. I've got a few near mint TP4s, but I don't want to play with those because they're in binders um so i uh, got the cheap ones but I'll, I'll work on getting the nice ones um with this deck i don't really try to go max rarity i just go with the rarity that i like the most 
Um, especially like I try to keep it older. So these are obviously new reprints because I'm working on getting the originals. But um, even if a uh, card gets a rarity bump in a in a more recent reprint, I don't really care for that because you know they just look weird. Like you've got like that really light kind of um, that color. It's like too pink here, and you know they lighten it up and just the cards look so much different now that I don't think they look as good as the older ones. So I will take a less rarity older over a high rarity newer card in most cases. Um, so and then finally three anti spell fragrance. So this card. Um, I haven't really used it, but it's really in here for, same with um, Royal Decree, I haven't used that either. But these are just in here for those anti-meta decks that are just kind of like crazy. Um, I think in the GOAT format, uh, online tournaments, somebody was running some kind of a, um, it was like a, a turbo something deck with like, it had like I think it was um, Strike Ninja and had like five monsters or six monsters and almost everything else was a spell card. So this is really good against those kinds of decks or like Reasoning Gate, that kind of thing. Side three of these in there and it slows them down a lot. Um, and then also side in the Dust Tornadoes because then you can just, they have to set their magic cards and then you just hit them with Dust Tornado. That's pretty nice. So that's why those are in there. Again, no, nothing in here is set in stone. This could change a lot. It really changes with the meta as the meta changes, this changes. Um, but the core of this deck stays the same. I think the one thing, the main thing that would change a lot with the meta in this deck is Kaiku. Um, this could totally be said. If, if people play less Chaos, I would play less Kaiku. That's really the only reason I play it. It's a nice beat stick, but yeah, this is really just for Chaos. So that's the GOAT deck. Um, let, me, let me know what you guys think. Um, I'm no expert on uh, old school dueling. Um, I call myself the old school expert because of collecting, but I love old school dueling. I've done it since 2002 and I don't ever want to stop because it's so much fun. So um, let me know what you guys think. If you think uh, something could be changed out for something else, if there's something I could do to improve this deck, let me know. Just come and let me know your overall thoughts. Um, and thanks for watching. And as always, stay tuned for more awesome Yu-Gi-Oh! videos.